mercury is an amazing element. It, it absorbs each other. It breaks apart from one blob of mercury, becomes two or three, and then are easily all put back together because they are one with each other. Behold the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as mercury. And uh, that is a good way to imagine the, the Lord, uh, the uh, singularity within the uh, plurality. Uh, in our image have we, us, made us. And uh, that's why the, there is a plurality. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, he is as Mercury and one with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're all God. They're all Mercury. And uh, you can separate them, but at the end of the day, they blob back together. They are completely one, just like that Mercury. And that is the best example. And know that I am the latter day Daniel, Daniel 12, 13, 1 foretold as Shiloh, Genesis 49, 12. And uh, many things have been distorted. Uh, people haven't known what's literal, what's metaphoric. Here's an example of something that people thought was metaphoric. This is the New Jerusalem photograph by NASA Hubble Telescope on the edge of the universe. Google it for yourself. And uh, it's amazing. And that was always literal. And yet something that people always thought was metaphoric uh, the everlasting gospel of which I am the writer, it has been most literal. And I am the writer thereof. And uh, uh, Sir Isaac Newton said, one, at the time of the end, one would stand up insisting on his literal interpretations of Bible prophecy amidst much clamor and opposition. But if you analyze what I'm saying, I am saying that Jesus was never the... Uh, uh, Messiah of the Christians. He was never Isa, the Messiah of the Islamics. He was never uh, Yeshua, the Messiah of the uh, Jews. No, he was always the Messiah of all of us. I am the Lord God, uh, um, uh, the God of all flesh, Jeremiah 32, 27. Him and God are one, and he has always been the Messiah of all mankind. That is the word of God, and his word opens anew, as Daniel 12, 9 foretold in these end times, in these latter days of the latter day Daniel, Daniel 12, 13, who arises in the latter day of uh, uh, the new mountain in the world, Isaiah 2, and the new mountain in the world, according to Micah 4, and uh, same latter day mountain, a great mountain of faith, uh, 1,200 videos I've built in only five months. And uh, this is the Latter-day Mountain of uh, Isaiah 25. It, it, there has never been another mountain uh, that has ever arisen in, in recorded history. Uh, that was always metaphoric. So you see people, uh, you know, <coughs> what's, what's literal they think is metaphoric, and what's metaphoric they think is literal. Literally, there would be a, na a guy named Daniel in the latter days to arise to embrace the uh, um, the destiny, his, it says his fate uh, as the alcoholic Shiloh of Genesis 49, 12, uh, one whose eyes are dull and red of wine, as the alcoholic of uh, Habakkuk 2. Uh, even though I've been transgressed by wine and the, my soul has not been our breath, the just will live by my faith because I am embracing all people of the earth for our risen good shepherd over all the flocks of man because he has always been the Lord God of all mankind. And if people do not get behind this, there's something wrong with their brain because he is Lord of all, and his covenant has been given, and it straightens out all distortionality. Uh, Muhammad said the day was coming, there, coming there'd be no more left of the Quran, except its outward form that his people would belong to another that sounds like Islam because of a book coming that would prove God's mercy. And he knew that book was behind him. And he was correct that there would never be another important prophet in the future. He knew that important kingdom age prophet was the one in Jeremiah 1.10 whose appointment was to tear it all down, Jeremiah. 
at the end. Tear down all the kingdoms of man, all that is not built solely upon the unconditional love that God has always secretly had for one and all of us, veiled through uh, pro prophecy. But prophecy, praise the Lord, is the spirit of the revelation of Christ's unconditional love for one and all. This is the good news, uh, and I am the good news messenger to um, uh, to the Hebrew people, Isaiah 41. And as foretold, they ain't saying a mumbling word. But it's also foretold that because this has been foretold since the beginning uh, uh, by the prophets, that the world will come to realize that I'm right about everything that I'm saying and that our definitions have always been wrong. Born again, never been to believe squat. Uh, born again, those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. Born again, flame back on. <laughs> that simple, flame back on. Uh, come on, Johnny Torch, flame on. Um, because otherwise we join the ranks of the walking dead. Uh, we have a, a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof of love. And we, when we're born, Jesus said we have to be as little children to be born again. That's because all children love. But what happens? We get older, we get unforgiving, we get bitter, we get toxic, uh, and we get hateful sometimes. Sometimes it's due to sickness. And, um, but the bottom line is, you know, there's a lot of sickness in the world. 25% of us, our elevators don't go to the top and they skip floors anyways. And I'm in that group. I'm alcoholic, but I'm a controlled alcoholic. I drink every three days, seven, eight ounces. That's my story. I, I got to live with it because I enjoy that lifestyle. But the truth is the Lord has chosen a foolish vessel to confound the wise with his truth. And he says to one and all, he says, I will be your God. You will be my people. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you want to argue all day long. Was he divine? Wasn't he divine? <laughs> we are divine. Uh, he said unto us that we are gods, John 10. And uh, we are angels in the flesh. That's why the word of God is, or we could be demons if we want. But you know what? Even the demons are going to be saved by the skin of their teeth, chased to the gate of hell if they keep their love light on. Uh, he'll, he'll snatch them back. He has not lost, lost one from the palm of his hand. It, uh, that's what the word says. And whoever walks with the Spirit walks under no condemnation. Walking with the Spirit is to have your love light on. So those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. Those words from John the Bab, or John the uh, Apostle are foretold to go again to all people, to all tribes, to all nations. And now I got my uh, pretty little light all set up over here. And I got to turn on my little angel. Dee, 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 dee. The lighting of the angel. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, uh, these are the days of a sign appearing on earth for those who would believe what is written in Zechariah 3, 4, and 5. It predicts in the latter days that God would pick uh, an incorrigible kind of dirty kind of a guy. Uh, and that was me uh, with a bag of glue glued to my face. I was suicidal in my own way. I just had a terrible attitude at FTW. But the Lord has saved me from myself to a great uh, degree, and I'm ever so uh, thankful and uh, praise the Lord. But uh, over a month ago, uh, uh, this little light right here, it's broken. The only way to turn on, it's a $2 light from, uh, uh, from uh, whatchamacallit. It's, just, it's pretty though, so I didn't throw it away. And I put it on the other side of the uh, room and then I noticed it started coming on exactly at the same time every day. And it drops uh, every four days, it drops a minute. Uh, the last four days, it's been 7.05. So today, uh, if I'm correct, it should be 7.04. Time will tell. But I got no idea what's going on because uh, if anybody has any ideas to explain this to me, uh, please leave a comment um, because the truth is, it's counting down backwards. See, if there was a light sensor in the thing, and I put nothing in that thing. It's, this is happening totally on its own. Um, but if there was a light sensor, it would the days get longer here. I live in Canada. So uh, the, the, instead of decreasing 
every four days dropping to the minute be behind, it would be going the other way. So this is the, um, the sign of Zechariah 3, 4, and 5. Uh, Zechariah 3, he sends, uh, he picks an incorrigible. Uh, the next chapter, 4, he lights, empowers one candlestick, and it is God, and that is not the, the, the servant. And uh, the last is, uh, then comes the flying scroll, which I have been reading over uh, with my computer. And uh, praise the Lord that uh, he's sending out the flying scroll, Zechariah 5. Read it, and it is the everlasting gospel that Jesus foretold. And it will go into the house of incorrigible people with um, not a good understanding of God's love. And it will consume them and their houses from within. And I forgot to turn on my little pretty light. I got the little pretty light here. There I go. I like my pretty little light when it's shining. Shiny, because we got to be shiny people as well. And now I'm looking for my uh, other telephone. Where did it go? See, if it can go wrong, it will. It does. That's called uh, Murphy's uh, Murphy's Law. See, the reason I'm uh, I'm going to pause this and find my phone because I want to know exactly what time that uh, that goes off, and I got to have my phone in order to uh, show you guys. Welcome back, and don't forget, get yourself a love hat. Put it on, I'm gonna grow a book, How to Grow Your Own Wig. I wear this in honor of the Nazarene. Yeah, I think it looks cool. <laughs> Gotta be a big kid. Uh, it is now 6.49, and uh, if all goes well, I'm expecting that light at 7.04, so we shall see. So these are the days of uh, knowledge exploding upon the face of the planet, and uh, that includes spiritual knowledge. Uh, this was foretold in the last chapter of Daniel. And um, so praise the Lord that spiritual knowledge has been included, because if you read Jeremiah 31, uh, it's foretold that the kingdom age covenant would be given in the latter days to break free all spiritual bondage off of people. Taking off my sandals here. Blessed are those walking in the sandals of uh, uh, peace, but man, they better wash those feet. Oh, now I know why Jesus always talked about washing feet because they get stinky out there in the hot sun. Not right. That's not even Christian. <laughs> oh, people got to lighten up. And it's true. So, Emmanuel, our God with us again, coming, is uh, soon to be coming. The seventh trumpet of the apocalypse has sounded first. And praise God for that. Because the first is last, and the last is first. And when that seventh trumpet sounded, all nations became the Lord's, because they always were his. Jeremiah 32, 27, proclaimed, I'm the God of all mankind. Nothing has changed. But the veil of gross darkness has finally been ripped by him, by him sending forth his covenant messenger. And I've got 12, 1300 videos all preaching just on that message. I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember. I'm going to write my law and my love on your heart. And beyond that, no one will need to be taught about me anymore, says God. All will know me from the least to the greatest. We all have, even the atheists who don't believe in a God, because all people have been loving babies. And if our light of love is on, then they're a born-again atheist. That's about the truth of it. We've complicated religion to the place where it's so crooked that it doesn't resemble any truth because uh, the word of God was changed with that new covenant when that words were added to it, uh, but you must believe. And uh, then came nothing but uh, headaches. And so it's, it's time that we have uh, 
new understandings to come, a new revelation of old revelation, so we can understand what in the heck's going on because prophecy has never been told to tell the future but to change the future. And we must beat our sword of the Spirit into the sickle of the Spirit from Revelation 14. I am that writer thereof. So if God, God's people do some homework, they'll, they'll quickly be discovering that Charles Darwin also became totally repentant towards his end. Uh, just like, uh, just like uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Anton LaVey, uh, who wrote the Book of Satan. But on his deathbed, he had an epiphany, and he realized, oh my God, he's loved. Watch the video, The Deathbed Confession of Anton LaVey, L -A -V L-A-V-E-Y, yeah, you'll find it, but uh, amazing video. Uh, so let no believer of God's grace hold any falseness whatsoever against either, uh, because his forgiveness has become their pillows, since special des delivery courtesy of their living Redeemer, whom he is, for he has never had any condemnation or anyone becoming one with him in love. That is his prayer in Gethsemane, John 17, 20. And that is his foretelling that in the latter day, he would arise as the good shepherd over all the flocks, not over these ones, not over those ones, but over all the flocks. Because we are all God's children and we have all been angels in the flesh. And um, so therefore, or we could be demons too if we want, but you know what? He will not judge us, but we would judge ourselves. If we commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and let our love light go out, then uh, that's it for us. We would That spiritual suicide. We need that light of God's love within us to shine our way in our everlasting body of the glory of the light of love that would be within us. So let it shine, let it shine, people. And have... Uh, uh, we've got to we've got to be like little children to have it become verb kind of love in action again because if it's not in action it's waxing cold and it becomes a noun and we become part of the walking dead. So therefore the I knew there was a good reason why I always love zombie movies. <laughs> Give me a good zombie. That's all I need. Therefore the Lord's faithful few need to see that regression. Regression goes backwards, Pro progression goes forwards, D depression is depressing, and evolution always fits very well under any of those categories uh, that are from the Antichrist spirit, uh, the revealed lawless one, Morgan Knight, who is more official, who is the one that all the world would wonder after the beast who is, was, and is again who becomes healed by a deadly wound from a sword, Revelation 13. He's a sword swallower off a freak show. I've been telling the world this and it's true. And you can see the 666 right in his Hyperion Paisley, uh, three, three Paisley sixes uh, in his Hyperion uh, religion of atheism that's kind of leading towards Jesus now these days a little bit. <laughs> it's a wix he's wixing up his merge all over the place but uh, know your uh, enemies and uh, keep your uh, what's that saying uh, and keep your enemies closer because uh, it's wisdom so therefore the Lord's faithful few need to see that it, it's time to change and uh, know that by the way that the false theory of uh, Charles Darwin is so laughable these are the days of uh, Google. Google it. Uh, uh, Paluxy uh, riverbed tracks, images. Uh, Paluxy, P-U-L-I-X-I-E, and you'll see uh, dinosaur uh, man footprints on top of dinosaur ones. And then Google um, uh, T-Rex blood cells, and you'll see them in the fresh cells of the uh, T-Rex. And then Google uh, Marco Polo T-Rex description, and you'll have an eyewitness accounting of his meeting with the T-Rex. This world was made with very great age. It was made ancient on day one. And I am restoring all things, all knowledge, according to what the Spirit has shown me. 
and the just will make uh, will live by my faith because it's the faith of the risen Lamb of God who is love over one all and all of us. But know that the false theory of Charles Darwin uh, especially dared to eliminate God from Earth's history as all blasphemy always does. Thus that evil theory did a great job in taking away people's eternal hope of a creator even being there. Who, who made them with tender loving care, fearfully and wonderfully made he us. We are angels in the flesh, or we can be demons if we want, but we are angelic beings. That's why uh, in the afterlife we will be neither male nor female, uh, Paul the Apostle uh, revealed, and will be as the angels because we are from his latter day house and the glory of his latter house is greater than that of the former because the first are last and the last are first we were created last uh, because we have a higher beauty uh, of the angelic being and that's why satan hated us before his kingdom age removal so praise god uh, that now our everlasting father has sent forth his everlasting gospel which is the foretold in Malachi 3 1 the message the covenant message that would prepare the way before the Lord the Lord is the sender of the message the writer of the message the mediator of the message I am the uh, messenger with his word in my mouth if anyone will believe me so because of um, faith in the Lord Charles Darwin he became a devil's advocate uh, against his very own false theory and he recanted it and it forced him to see that if evolution was true he said well why then is not every geological formation and every uh, uh, strat term uh, full of uh, intermediate links there's something missing and because you know if you look back early evolution you had fish becoming dogs and you had cats becoming a, a pig or some crazy stuff we know now by dna that only a, a cat will produce a cat and a dog will produce a, a, unless you can in, interbreed species and we've done a lot of that too but uh, the the truth is you don't start off with a, a fish that becomes a toad and a toad that becomes a lizard a lizard that becomes a, a, a cat it's just totally ridiculous um, and uh, so furthermore he assured he said this geology assuredly does not reveal any such fine uh, graduated organic chain with no intermediate specimens of nothing it, he's saying it was not existing there's great big gaps and that was perhaps the most obvious and serious objection which can be used against that false theory he said charles Dar darwin said this people look it up i'm not changing his words he called it a false theory in addition he exclaimed this to suppose that the eye with all of its imitability uh, contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances for admitting different amounts of light uh, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic uh, aberration could have been formed it's unreal to think that it could have been formed by natural selections and then he said it seems i must confess to even entertain that kind of evolutionary thought uh, he says i must confess it's completely absurd within the highest degree imaginable and this was out of the mouth of Charles Darwin who re recanted uh, again let me read that that it's crazy to think that it could be formed by natural selections and it seems I must confess completely absurd within the highest degree imaginable is what he said of his own theory I must confess it's completely absurd within the highest degree imaginable now if this was the creator of evolution maybe and if I did not change his words and I did not <laughs> I never you you look yourself you read the same words 
So all that you believe in evolution, <laughs> thus saith Charles Darwin. So isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Pulled the rug right out from all he is. And now all prophets uh, have made mistakes, though people. So you gotta bless all messengers of love. For even Abraham found himself telling King, uh, the King uh, Abimelech that his wife Sarah was his sister, and he lied, and not his wife, because he was enveloped by fear, so he lied. So it turned out in Genesis 20 that God decided to intervene so that that king would not defile her. And then God said unto that king, restore the man for his wife, Abraham. Restore her to Abraham. Uh, for he is a prophet and he shall pray for you and you shall live but if you do not restore her to him and your family your family shall surely die <sighs> folks we have the rise and great tribulation foretold and in this hour the lord god is saying unto one and all of us in the latter days exactly as it is written in jeremiah uh, 30 24 I shall return your terrifying, uh, uh, my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if you give me the desire of my soul. My desire, says the Lord God, which is to, to arise in a brotherhood of the unity of love with full understanding of all that has been and full understanding that we only have desolate heritages. Isaiah 49, 8 because no one understood their own holy books. <laughs> Just saying. No one could see the forest for the trees. Uh, we entered into Babylon in Babylon, and we've been there since. Oh, there's my little light of mine. Uh, here is my phone over here on this side. And the time is 7.04. I was right on the money on that one. 7.04. And uh, so it'll be on three more days, 7.04, coming on. And at the end of the day, I, it just sits there. It's off all day long. Uh, and it comes on exactly at the same time every night. So please, if anybody has any uh, uh, ideas, uh, this is a sign from God. Uh, I have that idea. And I know it because it's foretold in Zechariah 3, 4, and 5. So therefore, every believer needs to see that even though prophets serve a perfect Lord, they themselves are far from being infallible due to our weaknesses. In this age, considering what uh, Abraham had done, uh, he would have been the last prophet uh, that most confessing believers would have called on. But I'm telling you, the second he lifted up that knife over Isaac, that committed Emmanuel, God coming in the flesh, because if it had not, otherwise it only would have proved that a man loved God more than God would love man. If if God would not sacrifice his son for man, like he was asking man to do for him, uh, it sounds twisted, and it, but God would never have allowed it. He was just testing him. But he respected and feared him and trusted him enough that he believed that he would even perhaps raise him back up. I don't know what was in his mind, but faith is alive and faith is passionate and it wants to explode in one and all of us anew to be, become um, again as a, a verb, our love in action. And uh, so yet uh, Abraham was God's choice but within any self-righteous generation, the people immediately start looking for any prophet's faults so they can quickly dismiss any of their teaching uh, as being blasphemous and heresy. Maybe that's why God sent me as an alcoholic, uh, one whose eyes are dull and red of wine, Genesis 49, 12, the alcoholic of Habakkuk 2, 
one transgressed by wine, whose soul is not upright, but the just will live by my faith, because I will be as greedy as hell as I bring all people of the world to our living Lord of love, who is Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the risen good shepherd over all the flocks of man. He alone is the majesty of majesties, our hero of heroes, icon of icons. And he comes forth on the, the most magnificent stupendous uh, of his own uh, beauty before him on the great white cloud. And he is sending forth his everlasting gospel of love to one and all. So now comes forth his sharpest spiritual weapon, the double-edged sickle of his love of Amos 9. For he is the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his reaper, and the veil uh, separating the kingdom age uh, has now been pulled, uh, to, so that the wise may shine as the stars. And um, so it's time that the world must uh, leave all the extremism of religion behind. The wheat must uh, leave the tares. Uh, the wheat are people that will believe the word of prophecy and God's uh, witness validation of this ministry by the, the miracle of Zechariah. And um, they are to leave all across this planet all the mosques, temples, all the uh, all the so-called places of worship that have condemnation upon one another. For at the end of the day, we got to call God true and all men liars. God is saying this, I will forgive all your iniquity from now on, and I will never remember it again. So you're going to believe God saying that, or you're going to say, uh, believe man who says, well, if you don't believe what we're telling you, is, is, it says, then uh, uh, you're going to go to hell forever. It don't matter what God says. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello, hello. So with that, I can't think of a better way to end that one. Goodbye. <laughs> bye, bye, bye.